I feel like tonight didn't go very well. Um, yeah, they they came out and um, you know first quarter we fought and went back and forth. They hit some shots uh, and after that it was all them. And I thought they basically uh, beat us in pretty much every category after that. And that was that was the disappointing thing um, because our guys have fought through everything the whole season and. The crowd was here ready for it, and I thought they continued to yell, scream, and, and pull our guys through as much as they could the whole time. So that was great to see. But um, yeah, frustrating. How tough has the end of the season, just last stretch, really been for you guys, the various injuries you've had? How tough has it really been? Well, I, I think that's tough to deal with, but it's been um, gratifying in some ways to see you guys step up and, and fight and play hard. And, uh, and when it does come together, uh, whether it's with development players or, um, you know, imports coming back in. It's been um, gratifying in a lot of ways. So tonight was disappointing because we weren't able to do that and the jack jumpers um, were very good. Um, with the ejection in the third quarter, do you have anything to say there with what happened that ended up getting you ejected? Uh, you know what, I, I said my piece, um, tried to be respectful. Uh, as far as not swearing, um, that's about as much as I want to say about it. Um, Adel, how, do you, how do you see the game out there? It's not a really tough loss for you guys. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's been kind of the same story. We come out, <clears throat> we dig ourselves a little hole, and you know, then we'll, we'll have good stretches of basketball here and there. Um, but we just ha haven't put it together. How tough has it been for you trying to fit in the NBA? You've had a few injuries coming in here. How, how, how hard has it been for you? <clears throat> yeah, you know, c coming off two years of not playing and um, starting to get things rolling again, finding rhythm, finding um, adjusting to playing um, a different, a little bit different style of basketball and everything from the ball to the rims. Um, and you know, I'm just trying to take it one step at a time and enjoy the process while I'm doing it. At the end of the day, I'm playing basketball again. And me and Mike have had that discussion a lot of times. So uh, to answer your question, it hasn't been easy, but we're making it work. What kind of improvement have you seen from Abdul in the, uh, in the last few weeks? He's uh, you know, certainly uh, scoring a lot more freely. Yeah, I think, um, you know, things have been coming along with his body coming along. Um, you know, I think he was kind of learning how to, and we, with our medical team and everything, were best learning how to use him with his knee and training and, and that routine. And then he, and then he had his hand injury on his uh, shooting hand and, and his shooting finger or index finger. So um, just compiled on that. So I think. Uh, when you're injured, you you have to look after yourself, and I think you go you look inward and try to fix yourself, and um, and I think Abdul is coming out of that, um, and and enjoying basketball. Um, seem, seems to be. I mean, I don't want to speak for him, but we've had these conversations, and and it's been good seeing him come out of that. Um, in saying that, our our group didn't have a lot of fun tonight, um, so. Um, yeah, I, I love seeing the improvement, um, but you know, I uh, tonight was a hard hard night to appreciate it. You still got some uh, good minutes into some youngsters, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Austin Rapp, um, you know, got to start in an NBL game, and I think he was, um, you know, he's been working his way towards that. Um, I think it was a big. Big uh, occasion for him, um, and I think him along with a couple other guys didn't have their best games. But uh, yeah, uh, great to have Matt Kenyon back out there. Um, you know, guys are getting minutes. Cody, Cody did some good things, and uh, yeah, we uh, we got some minutes into some guys. And how about the um, the injured players? Um, are you looking at getting them back in for the last game, or? Uh, you talk, in the NBA, they talk about shutting down players. Is that something that you would ever think about doing? Uh, maybe if I was in the NBA, but but we are trying to win games, and uh, there was no thought of that. Um, 
coming into this game. Um, unless a guy is injured and he has a, a chance to injure himself further, um, we would want him on the floor. And, and that's how our guys have been as well. So who do you think uh, is in contention then for the last game? Well, everybody but Al, Alan Williams and uh, Craig Moeller. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I would. I guess you would say um, Mitch Creek and Gary Brown would be day to day with the hope. But uh, but I was hopeful for this week as well. Um, just with the ejection, what led up to that um, in terms of uh, you know in terms of the second tech? Um, is it for you personally? Is it a build up of uh, frustrations that's happened in the last couple of months, or is it two individual uh, things that happened tonight? You know, that's a conversation between me and my psychologist, I think. Um, that's kind of a, that's a question uh, that might take a longer answer than we have time for. Uh, no, I mean, I, uh, I probably was, uh, I was speaking at this, this level. Um, I wasn't swearing. Um, so if the buildup it may have come somewhat from my, my end, and I think it may have come somewhat from the referee's end. So, uh, you know, they get to make the final call. Mike, can you speak a little bit about the crowd tonight? 150th game, it's a big milestone. Yeah. You guys are sitting in last place on the ladder. Five of your best players out, but you still have a sellout crowd here supporting this, this club. The crowd was amazing. Yeah. How much does that mean to you guys? You know, and and it wasn't just tonight. You know, it's been the last, well, it's been all season, but it's been building. Um, I think we got a good group of guys who play hard, and um, the crowd appreciates that. Huge milestone, 150th game for for the organization, which was great, and it was a celebration. I think uh, I think our team, our club, um, they do it well, and I think people have a good time at the games. Um, and they like to see good basketball. Uh, sorry about tonight, but um, but yeah, they they've been fantastic, and uh, and it was awesome to hear them trying to pull this group along. And Abdul, you haven't been here that long, but I'm interested in your thoughts on the community engagement through the club, the whole Heartland concept, and just what you've made of it as you've as you got more and more exposure to it over the last little while. It's amazing, you know. Um, John Kane's a great arena, and we just recently started playing here again, so I didn't get a chance to experience it for myself. But <clears throat> to get our butt kicks like the last two games, like we have, and still have um, the support, and just what's been going on with all the injuries and us losing a bunch of games recently, to have that same support and to keep the same energy, you know, I'm out there soon around, and I just see kids ecstatic to watch us play, you know, that just means a lot for, for, from a player. Um, from a player's perspective, at least, I know it probably means a lot to you too, Coach. But um, it, go, it goes a long way. It's a huge sense of community here. Do you think it helps attract um, you know, bigger name players too now if they can see someone like that with a team sitting last in the lineup and the crowd's rocking like that? Yeah, I mean, um, it's, a, it's a good league, and I think that if you have, you know, atmospheres like we did tonight and you know, I, th I think it could definitely attract players.